If you've decided to apply to med school in the United States or Canada, you'll likely need to take the Medical College Admission Test, or MCAT for short. The MCAT is a multiple-choice, computer-based exam that's designed to test your critical thinking and problem-solving skills. The MCAT is administered by the Association of American Medical Colleges, or AAMC, and their overall goal is to make sure that you have a good foundational understanding of both the scientific and cultural complexities of medicine. Alright, so the MCAT itself has four sections. Chemical and Physical Foundations of Biological Systems, or ChemPhys for short, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, or CARS for short, Biological and Biochemical Foundations of Living Systems, or BioBioChem for short, and lastly, Psychological, Social, and Biological Foundations of Behavior, or Psych-Soch for short. The first, third, and fourth sections have 59 questions each, with a time limit of 95 minutes per section. Each section has 10 passages, with 4 to 6 questions per passage. There are also 15 independent questions that are not associated with a passage. In the second section, the Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills section, or CAR section, there are 53 questions that you have to answer in 90 minutes. This section has 9 passages, with 5 to 7 questions per passage. In total, the exam lasts about 7 and a half hours, if you include time for breaks. So let's go section by section. Let's start with the chem phys section, which consists of 30% general chemistry, 25% biochemistry, 25% physics, 15% organic chemistry, and 5% biology. Topics in this section include Newtonian mechanics, electrostatics and electrodynamics, waves and optics, atomic structure, molecular structure and interactions, solutions in acid-base chemistry, electrochemistry, separation and purification techniques, thermodynamics and kinetics, and the structure, function, and reactivity of biologically relevant molecules. Next, there's the bio-biochem section, which consists of 65% biology, 25% biochemistry, 5% general chemistry, and 5% organic chemistry. Topics in this section include the biological macromolecules like carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids, biochemical pathways for energy production, cell biology, microbiology, genetics, and physiology. Then there's the psych soch section, which consists of 65% psychology, 30% sociology, and 5% biology. Topics in this section include cognition and consciousness, language development, emotion and motivation, learning and memory, sensation and perception, identity and personality, as well as major psychological disorders. Sociology topics focus on social structures, social thinking and attitudes, as well as societal stratification and inequality. There are four types of questions that you'll get on these topics. The first type is a knowledge of scientific concepts and principles question which might ask you to make connections between different scientific principles. For example, a biology question might ask you to identify the structural similarities between cells in the heart and the liver. The second type is a scientific reasoning and problem-solving question, which will ask you to apply scientific principles across disciplines or in new situations. So a physics question might ask you to use a formula about force to make predictions about the likelihood of a bone fracture if a certain force is applied to the arm. The third type of question is a design and execution of research question, which might ask you to evaluate scientific research. A psychology question might ask you to choose the best way to measure a stress response within a certain group of individuals. And finally, the fourth type of question is a data-based and statistical reasoning question, which might ask you to interpret data from figures, tables, or charts. A sociology question might ask you to find the correlation between socioeconomic level and heart disease from a table of data. Now, there's also the CARS section, which is a little different in that it doesn't test you on science-based topics, but instead it asks you to think critically about material from a really wide range of disciplines. About half of the questions will come from texts from the humanities, like literature, art, philosophy, and history. 
The other half will come from texts from the social sciences, like anthropology, political science, or economics. The questions will ask you to demonstrate your ability to understand the author's message or main idea. It's also important to be able to find what's implied by the author through things like tone, metaphor, structure, style, and other literary devices. In some questions, you have to identify the logic behind the author's argument, and figure out if the text supports a particular argument. Lastly, you'll be asked to apply what you've read to an outside scenario. Like, how might the author respond if they were given new or contradictory information? You can think of these as what-if questions that expect you to apply the text in new contexts and situations. After completing all four sections, you'll be given the option to void your MCAT exam. If you do choose to void your exam, your exam will not be scored, and medical schools will not be notified that you voided your exam. If you choose not to void your exam, your exam will be scored, and it'll take about 35 days for you to receive your scores. All of your MCAT scores will be sent to medical schools when you apply, unless you voided your exam. Each section of the MCAT is scored between 118 and 132. So multiplying by 4, that gives us a total score between 472 and 528, which is a 56 point spread. The average score for each section on the exam is 125, so the average student would get a 500. These numbers don't mean a whole lot by themselves, and it's important to know what percentile you fall into, which is how well you did compared to others who have taken the MCAT in the past three years. Say you scored in the 90th percentile. That means you did as well or better than 90% of MCAT takers, which means you're in the top 10%. Though the numerical score to percentile equivalent isn't fixed, these days the top 10% are scoring above about 513, which is about 128 or more in each section. A high MCAT score will definitely get a med school's attention, but ultimately it's just one factor in your application. Other factors include your GPA, your undergraduate coursework, your letters of recommendation, extracurricular activities, and your personal statement. You can take the MCAT up to three times in a year, four times in two consecutive years, and seven times in total. In terms of preparing for the MCAT, one interesting data point is that students in the top 80th percentile clock in at about 300 hours of consistent, regular study time. That could mean studying full-time for two months, or studying one hour a day for a year. It's up to you. You should customize a study plan that fits into your time frame, and you should try a few different ways of preparing to see what works best for you. Also think about how and when you like to study best, and make sure that you're able to do it without distractions. As you start, it's really helpful to take a baseline test to identify your weak spots, so that you can focus on them, and you should take several practice tests so you can see how you improve. For some people, that might mean taking a deep dive on a topic that you don't feel comfortable with. For others though, it means simply just practicing more questions so that you can get used to answering the questions quickly. The MCAT requires you to not only understand the content, but to be able to apply it to new, unfamiliar situations. So memorization is important, but understanding is crucial to success. If you're still not feeling confident in your study approach, you should consider getting help, which could be in the form of one-on-one -on -one tutoring, the advice of a counselor, or taking prep courses, all of which can be really helpful. Now, there's no perfect roadmap to success for preparing to take the MCAT. There are a ton of options available, and the key is to find what resource or combination of resources works best for you. Ultimately, your commitment to preparation is more important than whether or not you choose any particular resource or tool.